your fucking options. Fuck your fucking zero DTE calls. Fuck the economy. Fuck inflation. Fuck your soft landing. I am sick of this shit. Fuck Wall Street. Fuck you all. I'm fucking up. guys k-dub here with another episode of crypto zombie welcome back to the channel hope you're having a great day today now i know it's been a minute since an update but i wanted to talk about a lot of things that are going on right now obviously specifically for bitcoin because we did have bitcoin getting back above seventy thousand dollars again as you can see over here it's kind of sitting around that line and you know to be honest we did have a very nice test on this trend but you know if we don't get above this area it could signal maybe possibly more volatility there may even be another chance potentially to scoop up the dip but ultimately like i said I believe that these dips are for buying and I do think we're going to see much higher price action. Let's not forget if we come over here, we literally have the Bitcoin having coming in less than 28 days, right? So this is happening very, very soon. Now, could it be a sell the news event? Possibly. I mean, in and of itself, the having usually doesn't have a massive immediate impact, but over time, as that distribution does slow down because it is getting cut in half, if you do maintain that same demand, then yes, eventually you do tend to see a very, very massive pump. And remember, generally speaking, when Bitcoin does breach its all-time highs, three out of the last four times, it only took three weeks for price to double. Now, I know that seems crazy to, that, you know, to think we could go to $140,000 in, you know, I guess it would be two weeks from now, right? That, that sounds crazy. But really, when you break down the math on what's going on, the fact also, not to mention that uh, BlackRock had a secret behind-the-scenes backdoor meeting with their top clients yeah, you're going to be interested what they told them because this is quite shocking. But as far as Bitcoin is concerned, we really could see a massive, massive shocking move for Bitcoin. And it actually can get a lot crazier than most people are anticipating. On top of the fact that, guess what? We're also seeing altcoin mania. I think you guys have seen the meme coins going absolutely crazy. Now, generally, I would say that that's a bit of a top signal, right? Like once everyone just starts throwing their money at memes, but it might actually be different this time, and I'll explain to you why in just a bit. So we're going to talk about all that today. If that sounds good to you, definitely stick around to the end of this video, guys. I have a lot of things to cover. And, you know, again, Arthur Hayes, million dollar Bitcoin. Is it possible? Well, check this out. We're going to get into some stuff. But I did just want to mention, guys, this was the big news. Now, I normally don't talk about stuff like this in the beginning of the video, but I was mentioning that there is a game that is coming out and it's called Off the Grid. So you can see Off the Grid creator Gunzilla has raised 30 million ahead of their PlayStation, Xbox, and PC launch. Now, why is this huge? I'm going to get into the Bitcoin stuff, don't worry. But we know that a lot of people, uh, you know, specifically gamers, right? They're saying GameFi, it's going to bring in all these new people to crypto. But the problem is, is that a lot of the games right now, you kind of have to have a bit of crypto knowledge to get into it. Whereas this game, which is going to be released at some point this year is actually um, you don't have to have any knowledge at all when it comes to cryptocurrencies. You can literally just play the game as is. You can see that it's a 150 player battle royale being released on PC, PlayStation 5, and Xbox, and it's going to feature blockchain-based ownership of unique game assets via Avalanche NFTs. It's also operating on its own subnet. So again, this game is coming out. You can see right here, this is Gunzilla. This is their website, and this is the trailer for the game. So if you guys want to see the trailer for this, I'll play it at the end of the video. I know I'm going on a bit of a tangent, but I'm very excited for this because this is really what we've been waiting for as far as the GameFi sector is concerned. So I would definitely keep an eye on on off the grid Gunzilla games, they're gonna have their own token, you know. So, just like I said, guys, definitely just this is what I was talking about in the last video. I think this is gonna be really, really massive. So, let's get into the Bitcoin content though. As you can see, as CryptoCon has pointed out, we tend to get into these high volatility areas, and usually you're looking for this double peak. Now, we've gone over a bunch of different indicators why I believe the, the Bitcoin really price action is basically just beginning. Um, you know, we've gone over why I could show you with the money flow, but ultimately you get these double tops. And when you do get the second top, that's usually when it's time to sell, right? And you can see 
We actually have not even entered into this area just yet. Now, you could say that this was a bit of an outlier right here, but again, when it comes to this cycle, there was a lot of crazy things going on. We had the FTX debacle. We had a lot of manipulation in the background. There were terrible bad actors suppressing the Bitcoin price. We've gone over all this, right? That's all gone. We don't have that situation anymore. And, you know, Peter Thiel, he's over here from Marathon Digital, and he's basically explaining that when it comes to these ETFs, you know, everybody's like, first of all, they've actually performed a lot better than most people thought they were going to. But the crazy part is that not even all of the capital has even come. In fact, some of it won't even be here for possibly even another year to two years. Well, I think most of this has been the pent up demand for the ETF. You had some rotation out of miners into the ETF. Um, you know, a lot of these ETFs haven't even really started marketing their products to wealth advisors. You have very few wealth advisors that actually are recommending it to their clients yet. So we've yet to see the real kind of flow from alternative assets and uh, just you know retirement accounts, pension accounts into Bitcoin. That will come um, most probably later this year, early next year. But I think right now what you've seen is a rotation. At the same time, you're seeing people looking at the economy, what's going on, uncertainty in the world, um, and just some jitters. The other thing that the ETFs now hold a very large amount of Bitcoin, uh, and so there's not a lot of liquidity in the market. So any move one way or another is causing a lot of volatility, which over time will just normalize because as the market cap of these ETFs and of Bitcoin overall continues to grow, volatility will decrease. and it'll operate more like a traditional asset, but we have a while to go before we get there. And as you guys could see right here, like Seth pointed out, really a lot of this money has been coming from the GBTC outflows, which is the blue down here. So that's what's been keeping us down. So a lot of this money has just been basically going from the GBTC ETF and flipping into the other ETFs, right? Yes, we have had fresh capital, but you could argue that a lot of it was just being rotated out of GBTC. We are actually seeing positive inflows. And by the way, I don't know if you guys can hear this they're cutting down trees in the backyard so if you hear anything in the background there's nothing I can do about it. They're just they're, they're just working out there. But so the point I'm trying to make right here is that we are still seeing these positive inflows and we haven't really started to see that massive, massive amount yet, right? Remember, a lot of these guys uh, that are gonna be advising these to their clients, they want a little bit of a track record. And I know it sounds crazy. You know, you would think like, oh, you just wanna buy low, right? Well, yeah, of course. But again, these people are looking for long-term allocation. Uh, you know, of course, there's traders and speculators, but they're not trying to just get into something like they're not staring at charts like we are all day basically right they're buying it and they're setting it and they're forgetting it but in order for them to offer this to their clients they want there to be that track record you know the ETFs launched you know so many months ago this is how the price has performed and then actually the fact that the price has performed well I know you would think don't buy high, but no, that actually sends the message like, hey, this is a great place to park some of our funds, right? But I know what you're saying. What about the Fed, the FOMC, right? Now they're not gonna do as many cuts and, and, and people are worried about that. Well, Anthony Pompliano kind of broke that down pretty straightforward. We don't know what the future holds. We have violated things that we're serving as these kind of guardrails or these guidance paths. And so we are in uncharted territory in that sense. At the same time, usually what we have seen is that Bitcoin has been this great index for what many people thought were interest rate environments. They would said, oh, when interest rates are low, Bitcoin went up in price. When interest rates got raised, Bitcoin crashed. But now we sit here and Bitcoin is near all time highs and interest rates are still five and a half percent or higher in the United States. And so is this time different? Well, Bitcoin has violated the narrative saying that Bitcoin was only a zero interest rate phenomenon. Bitcoin continues to be resilient regardless of the interest rate environment. And so then you can say, well, what exactly is Bitcoin? From all of the data that I've looked at, it appears that Bitcoin is actually an index for global liquidity. Now, what does that mean? In the United States, in Europe and Japan, over the last two years or so, we have seen them trying to drain liquidity from the system. They've been selling assets off their balance sheet. They've been raising interest rates, and they're trying to create these tighter financial conditions. But China and a couple other central banks around the world, they continue to pump liquidity into the market. And so global liquidity has actually been increasing, even though the major central banks in the United States, Europe, and Japan have been trying to drain liquidity. 
And so these countries are actually competing with each other in terms of how much liquidity is going in or out of the system. But global liquidity has continued to increase over the last 12 months or so. And so what has happened? Bitcoin's price has continued to increase. And so naturally, as we are watching global liquidity increasing and interest rates remaining high, it then begs the question, well, what happens if global liquidity continues to increase and interest rates get cut? Now, that may seem like something that isn't going to happen. Jerome Powell and others are saying, no, we need to stay the course. We need to keep interest rates higher. At the start of 2024, it was estimated that there would be seven or eight different interest rate cuts. Probably seven was what the market was saying. Now, the market is saying only three. And even that level of confidence around three cuts is waning. And so if they are going to keep interest rates high, then Bitcoin will simply trade off of that global liquidity. And at the end of the day, it is inevitable. The liquidity will flow. They will pump money back into the system. But before we talk about that, I just had to talk about this Joe Weisenthal tweet. This is a little bit of a rant here. Look at this. Look at how salty of a, of a, of a, of a Twitter post this is. Imagine two people. Person A put all of their money in the S&P 500 10 years ago. Person B put all of their money in Bitcoin 10 years ago. Person A's portfolio is at an all... Oh, someone's at the door. I gotta, go get, I gotta go get the door, guys. I'll be right back. All right, sorry about that, guys. Uh, this is what I mean. It's just absolutely crazy around here lately. This is why it's been so hard to put a video out. Um, so, but like, but just imagine the saltiness of this person. And like, person A's portfolio is at an all-time high today. Person B's portfolio is thirteen percent off its high. Like, really? I mean, he's not wrong, right? But look at the way that you have to word these things to make it look like it was a bad decision to buy Bitcoin. Yeah, okay. So how much did you make percentage-wise 10 years ago in the S&P versus how many did you make percentage-wise in Bitcoin, right? And I'm pretty sure he's being serious. But anyway, I just I had to get that out of the way. But, you know, like Jack Mahler's point points out, it doesn't really matter what the Fed is saying at the FOMC because at the end of the day, this system is designed for money printing. In fact, if we don't print money, the system literally collapses, but he explains it a lot better. Uh, let me, let's dumb it down. The, the problem with central planning money, which is such a core technology to society working, think about it, Ed, you go to work every single day and you pour your blood, sweat, and tears all of the time you spend on this planet in exchange for what? Money. So right. the central planning of money convolutes and complicates so much of the inner workings of society. Let's go back to basics. Our government is in debt, right? Yes or no? The U.S. government, that is. What? All governments, right? Our government's yes. in debt. Okay. Traditionally, Ed, if I owed you 20 bucks, I'd have two options. I'd one have to default on that and say, you know what, Ed, I hope you still consider me a good friend, but I'm not going to make whole on that $20. The other is I could pay it back. Those are classically the two options that anyone in debt has, right? Now, the government, because they centrally plan and control our currency, unfortunately has a third, and that's that they can print more money, devalue the debt that they have and that they owe, and allocate more capital to themselves. So our government can't default. The U.S., the United States of America, cannot default on debt. It would collapse the entire planet. We also cannot afford to pay it back. So if you just like, listen, I didn't even go to college, brother. This is just 101 basics, how the world works. If we can't default and we can't pay it back, what's the only option that they have to do? No matter what they sit and tell you at the Fed chair meetings and all of the economists, they have to issue more dollars. And so if there's going to be more pieces of green paper, you want them competing for the most fixed thing. Right. There's more right. dollars that are competing for a fixed amount of Bitcoin. And, Jack, and yes, real estate's going to go up, too, because there's more dollars competing for real estate. But they can make more real estate. They can find more gold. They can't make any more Bitcoins. And that's just I mean, even a college dropout can understand that, my friend. Oh, and uh, how about this? Look who's uh, buying Bitcoin. So I'm not a, I don't really follow a lot of gold. Uh, but these guys over here, they are a South American gold miner, Neelam Resources, okay, a gold miner, files a letter of intent to acquire 24,800 Bitcoin. So why are gold miners who mine gold now looking into Bitcoin? You've seen the record outflows from the gold ETFs. 
I wouldn't be surprised if some of these gold miners flip over, start mining Bitcoin, purchasing Bitcoin, right? It's all happening. These are all the things we've talked about for all these years that everyone, everyone always laughs at all the crazy, right? Like a nation will never adopt Bitcoin. And then we have El Salvador, you know, and no one will ever put it on their balance sheet and there'll never be an ETF. You know, remember that guy, Bitcoin will never trade above 70,000. Yeah, well, it just did. And it's also doing it today. So, you know, don't listen to these people that are saying that these things can never happen. And something that, you know, may sound crazy. It may sound like crazy moon math that, that, that Arthur Hayes had pointed out. And we talked about this in the previous video, but he's saying that he thinks Bitcoin can hit a million dollars this cycle. Seriously, this cycle. Think about that. And he's not even calling for a super cycle. He expects there to be a correction, massive correction at some point. But realistically, could it happen? We'll see our cycles, right? But how big can this one be? I think we get to a million dollar Bitcoin at least like on, on a tick, right? I think we can get there. I think if we really see a concerted global effort by all the major economic blocks to financially repress people into buying their bonds and they've and we have this little door of crypto open in the bond market is what, I don't know, however many tens or hundreds of trillions of dollars, trillions, right? Yeah. We don't need all that money to come into crypto. We can see it a little bit. And remember that it's a marginal price. It's not about the whole market cap. The last price is only, maybe only a Satoshi trades at a million. Bitcoin, but that'll be the last price, right? It's the, that's how it works in, in markets. It's all about at the margin. So at the margin, if we have global fixed income investors who hold bonds, who are like, I'm getting a bad deal, at least I'm going to allocate some of this money into crypto, then I don't think we have a big enough imagination about how high we could go because the global bond market is just so massive. And when the bond investors make a decision collectively that they don't like being in a particular market, they will stampede into something else and it will cause reverberations around the global economy. And thankfully we have this thing called crypto. We have a little small door and some people can be saved. Most people will not. But those of us who hold these assets, I think are in for some massive gains in fiat terms. And that comes with, with a whole host of issues in and of itself. Is that the right way to value your portfolio or not? It's more of a philosophical question. But I do believe that um, if we really hit this sovereign debt bubble, if that is deflating this cycle, then we have no, it's going to be so ridiculous um, how high this stuff goes. Okay. So million dollar Bitcoin, right? Probably not going to happen. Sounds ludicrous. Sounds outrageous, but it's plausible. But here's the thing. BlackRock held a closed door meeting for their top clients last month where they said a 28% allocation to Bitcoin was optimal. So like Luke, uh, Mickick points out, what would happen if the entire world rebalanced their portfolio to match what a BlackRock math quant suggests? Well, you have $900 trillion, 28% trillion of that, 252 trillion market cap. Now do the multiplier effect, right? Times four. And basically you get a $48 million Bitcoin. So it's not actually that crazy, <laughs> you know? I mean, the thing is, is, all right, for example, like if Bitcoin goes to $200,000, right? which it's possible this cycle, it only has to do a 5X from there to get to a million. You see what I'm saying? And with these large capital inflows, you have to assume that if they put, you know, even just 1% in, that's a lot. I mean, they're talking 28%. If you just put 1% in, we're talking a lot, right? And again, a lot of them have not even allocated yet, still. Believe it or not, even with all these massive inflows, they still have not fully allocated. And a lot of these guys are still waiting. They're still waiting for more confirmation. They want more track record of the assets performance. And they're gonna be buying the Bitcoin when it's at 100,000, when it's at 150,000. And then they're gonna come in with new capital, right? Now, yes, of course, there's always gonna be speculators. And you know, some people are gonna wanna sell and take profits, but that's just the name of the game, right? And these corrections that we've been getting, these 20% corrections, this is nothing. This is nothing, guys. We used to get like 40% corrections every other weekend. So trust me, this market is actually not as volatile as you would have expected it to be. But that's also the other thing is that you assume that as the asset class begins to mature, maybe we won't see those big drawdowns. Of course, I'm not talking about bear markets, but you know, maybe on the interday, maybe we don't get those big drawdowns. I mean, it's likely that at some point we get one, you know, around the halving we usually do, but Let's be honest, there's been a lot of things this time that never happened before. We never went below the previous all-time high, but we did that, never fell below the 200 weekly. But then on the flip side, we also never had a new all-time high before the halving. So you, you can literally say this time is different. I know it's a meme to say that, 
but it is actually different. Like st statistically, there's so many things that we've never seen before. Now, getting back to BlackRock, this is where there are more opportunities for altcoins in the cycle. And what could explode now, BlackRock is looking into real world tokenization on the Ethereum network. So RWAs, real world assets, right? So this is another niche to pay attention to. We've spoke about several of them on the channel. Um, I know Dpin also some people have been speaking about that. Still looking at, obviously, the AI, the gaming, um, the BRC20s. I still think, people think the BRC20 thing is, 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 is over. I don't think it's over. I, I think the narrative is going to come back very strong. But, you know, for example, if you guys look over here at this, uh, at Soil, they're doing fully regulated DeFi protocol, ensuring secure returns on stable coins backed by real world assets. And if you have a look at just the quick chart right here, look at how this is just taken off, right? And we were looking at this down at around, you know, this area right here, this 40 cent area. And personally, you know, not trying to shill this, but at a 16 million market cap, you know, this is up 57% in a day. I know it seems like a lot, but I mean, th these are the types of coins that could potentially hit, you know, billion dollar market cap. So again, like I would just check this out, not financial advice. You know, you don't have to, you know, if you don't want to buy altcoins, don't buy them. But I had a really big, uh, really big tweet actually over on X where I was explaining to people, I know the Bitcoin maxis hate it when I say that I trade altcoins, but I don't know what you guys want from me. I, you know, there's a lot of opportunities right now, especially to accumulate more Bitcoin. So, you know, check out soil, not financial advice. I mean, it has pumped a lot. So there is a possibility that if you buy right now, it could have a pullback, but it's only at a 16 million market, right? The fully diluted market cap is obviously a lot higher. That is something to be concerned about potentially. But again, when you have these narratives running, you know, these things can go a lot crazier, a lot faster. So, you know, just kind of checking in on the Bitcoin chart real quick. Um, and again, I will put that trailer at the end if you guys are interested in, in, in looking at the game trailer. But yeah, I mean, basically, we've just had a nice, uh, uh, you know, flip right here. We were in this channel. We had a little bit of a, of a bear trap. You know, is this a bull trap? Will we fall back into the channel? It is possible. Again, you know, there's not really much to talk about on this analysis. You know, we're still in a parabolic trend, clearly. And if we zoom in right here, we're just still bouncing between these two uh, 3.618 and 4.236 FIB, right? And the extension which we actually said should have happened last cycle because realistically, Bitcoin has always gone above the 4.236. It did not do that last cycle. So I really believe that this is where we should have topped out last cycle. So that tells me that there's possibly a lot more to go this cycle, but we have to get above the $73,000 area. If not, well, then you're looking at a retrace back again to around the 60,000 area. But like I said, what could end up happening, you know, obviously if we have a breakout, that'd be great. But, you know, we could just be doing some consolidation within here, you know, leading into the having. And again, what's telling me that we are unbelievably early is these money flows on the two weekly. I mean, this thing is very, very accurate. You know, when you do start to get these flows, they do basically start to call the massive beginnings of all of these moves. And as you can see right here, look at this. I mean, it's barely even visible, guys. It's literally just barely starting to cross over right there. So, you know, generally speaking, um, obviously on the weekly, we are a little bit more into it, but you know, these cycles really tend to go on for a long time. So, you know, basically from where we're at right now, roughly, you know, how long did we have until price really started correcting? Well, back here in 2017, we had about 567 days. So yeah, that was a really long time. And then what did we have last cycle when we were around that area? Uh, I guess you could kind of say it was right here. Um, if you go to the, all the way to the second top, that was about 588 days. So, I mean, does history have to repeat? There are some people saying that maybe this cycle is going to be a little bit shorter, you know, but we also had that theory that um, we could have something where, you know, we have a crazy retrace like back here, right? Where, look at this, the Bitcoin price has a massive mid-cycle correction down 82%. I don't think we're going to go down 82%. But then from that point, it still has another 2,000% rise, right? That's a possibility as well. But ultimately, this is still telling me that, you know, I don't care what anybody says about the market getting too hot. The market is not overheated at this point. I mean, yeah, you could say the RSI or something like that. But for the most part, the money flow is going. And anything on this, you know, if you want to do the daily, anytime Bitcoin dips into this band, it's basically by the dip season. So the level right now is around 65,000 with the low end around 57. So again, anything within this guppy on the lower daily, I think is an amazing opportunity to buy. And I mean, if we switch it to the weekly, it's probably, yeah, it's way above it.
I mean, yeah, you're talking massive buy opportunities if Bitcoin was to go down to like 50,000. But, you know, when you do start to get, you know, Bitcoin moving into this green, I mean, you guys, a five-year-old could literally see, I mean, Bitcoin tends to stay in this for a very, very long time. The only weird exception was kind of back here. And that was obviously because of COVID. So that kind of just like made everything really weird. But for the most part, you know, I still think we are in that cycle to go. So that's about it for me today, guys. Also, friendly reminder about uh, Meta, Meta Signals. Yeah, these NFTs, if you guys want, again, you know, absolutely killing it. You can join the free Discord. You can take the free signals. You don't even have to buy the NFT, but I would suggest getting it because this is valued in ETH. And the more expensive ETH gets, literally as the price goes up, the more expensive this NFT is going to get. I mean, there were people that were getting this NFT for literally $3,000. And this is a lifetime access forever to all of the upgrades. Now, you know, it's like a lot more. It's like 7,000. I don't, I don't know. It's like priced in ETH. But yeah, I'm just saying like, you know, there's 74 left before it hits the new price increase. So I would definitely just check that out, guys. Uh, you know, we had a... Um, we had a Twitter spaces and it was really, really awesome. A lot of people are joining. You can even check out, there's uh, reviews. You know, everyone's really been having, uh, I mean, for the most part, are they all winners? No, but I mean, statistically it's, it, you could literally basically just blindly take these trades. And for the most part, you know, give or take a few of them, they have a very good success rate. So check that out if you guys are interested. And also I wanted to play the off the grid gameplay for you guys so you could just check it out. What's up, Cobra fans? Welcome to Cobra's Corner. Is this for real? Yes, Black Stabbath. Three huge game developers have gotten together to create the ultimate gaming experience. The top video game players in the world. Are they any good in real life battle royale type situation? Not this, but actually this. It's not playing around on the screen. We do have ex-Navy SEALs coming down. We need the best of the best. Anybody can play. You just gotta be brave enough to take a bullet. Kilo Kitty wants to know if it hurts. Of course it hurts. We donate a hundred grand worth of cyber limbs. But there's a chance for fame. There's a chance for fortune. I need you to take her down to Midtown Harbor. Do not f*** up. You can also... Oh, God. Hey, look at me. Welcome to me, fans. Click me. Like me. I don't care. Watch me. Don't watch me. I'm over this whole thing. Don't forget to, to smash that like and subscribe button uh, at the bottom of the screen. So that's it for me today, guys. And again, you know, not trying to shill anything. You know, it's not about, you know, token price go up, all that for whatever. I just think it's a really awesome project. And the fact that you can have real world gamers gaming on it, you don't have to actually purchase anything in the game. But if you want to, you could trade your assets, your skins, right? Your different weapons and stuff like that. And, you know, having the ability to choose not to and then, you know, what do you think they're gonna do when they start going on like, you know, OpenSea or something and oh my goodness, somebody's like selling this for like $3,000 and I just found this thing in a game or something, right? I don't know, I just, uh, you know, we were very bullish on a lot of things like that last year. I think that it's coming to fruition now. So there's a lot of different things you could pay attention to. Obviously follow me over on Twitter X if you're not, that's where I post when I'm not uh, making YouTube videos and I haven't really been making as many YouTube videos. Uh, it's been really difficult. So Twitter's a lot easier. You know, you just tweet, send something out. There you go. So that's it for me guys. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. If you do want to learn how to trade and uh, you want to use some exchanges that we have decentralized Apex, really awesome. Uh, so if you guys are using Apex, I'll give you a little hint. Use like Polygon or BSC and the withdrawals are like literally a dollar. So you don't have to pay those high Ethereum fees, all right? But until next time, guys, stay crypto, and of course, peace out.